And we are live. Oh man, we're live. You were wondering if we forgot about something. Yeah, I feel we like shall we, see. <laughs> I know. I feel like we totally forgot something. I don't know. Welcome everybody. We do the. We like to start a couple minutes early, just do a nice soft launch, in case Josh screwed something up and we can fix it really quick. You know. Did you hear that music blasting over there? My my other screen was turned on. <laughs> oh no, I didn't hear it. Perfect. <laughs> welcome, uh, welcome everybody tuning in greg great to have you here uh we'd love to if you're watching and you're tuning in we'd love to hear where you're from uh it's just kind of fun to do i'm tuning in from ohio uh kind of outside of cleveland east side of cleveland far east side but and uh josh where are you coming in from man i'm uh, minneapolis minnesota on a cold but sunny day thankfully nice yeah you know i love the i love the sunny days yeah. Cold, not so much, but the sunny, I feel like it makes up for it. I've been doing this thing where I, in the morning I try to like get uh, this cortisol spike where like if you see enough light in the morning, it just spikes your, like it wakes you up in a certain way. So it's been nice in Minnesota just like getting that sunlight. That's great. That's nice. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty cloudy here. Welcome, Carlos. Carlos is tuning in. Awesome. From, I'm not sure where Carlos is from. Mayron's from Pakistan. Welcome, Mayron. Skeev is from coming in from texas bruce from iowa welcome great to have you here johnny from south africa martin from the uk welcome awesome all right another south africa uh mops and then Klaus mm -hmm. from sweden awesome hey welcome Klaus. cool maybe uh we should talk about Klaus's project today mental note Klaus. Oh, okay if i'm not mistaken tell me if i'm wrong Klaus. but i think you were working on the brewing beer brewing project if i'm not mistaken but oh nice it's been a while i if I'm maybe my maybe my uh, neurons aren't firing right, but um, <laughs> welcome Stephen from Belgium, awesome, <laughs> Mr. Robertson from uh, London, England, awesome. How much fun! All these folks tuning in. All right, Eric from Brooklyn, great to have you here. All right, Mohan from India, welcome. How cool! So many people joining in. This is fun. Yeah, last um, week, for anyone that was here last week, we were in the same state. I actually got to visit Mike for the first time, but I was yeah, recording was fun. In, in a basement, but now for yeah. travel. Well, right. At your Airbnb, you were staying in the found yeah. somewhere quiet to record. Exactly. But uh, yeah, last week was a lot of fun. We had John Telon as a guest um, yeah. of Predictable Designs and Hardware Academy. That was a lot of fun. I had a great time last yeah, week. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. That was awesome. All right. Natasha from Vancouver. I think I pronounced that right. Yeah. Steven just asked Q and A or what's the format tuning in for the first time, uh, man, that is such a great question, Steven. Yeah. You know what? Uh, we just kind of hang out and talk. Um, if, uh, feel free to ask questions in the chat. Absolutely. We also have a link you can send questions to, uh, program electronics.com forward slash question. Um, and, uh, we can, we try to address those in these shows. Um, or you can honestly, you can just email if you just email, um, Michael at programmingelectronics.com or contact at programmingelectronics.com with just a question for the show. You know, we try to bring it up there. Uh, generally, we try not to get too, too technical on the show because like I can't even add five plus five live, you know, like it, I do a lot better, you know, <laughs> kind of thinking through stuff like that, but like just general pointers and stuff like that. Definitely. Uh, absolutely. Ask it in the chat. Um, and uh, Muko from Austria. Welcome. Judson coming in from Florida. Welcome. So, yeah, awesome. I guess. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Josh. Well, it's just about, just about that time. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, it's 1030. So we're going to officially kick off our uh, our show today. My name is Mike Chach. I'm the owner of Programming Electronics Academy. We're an online education company and we help try. We help people try to build confidence when they're programming stuff with Arduino programming electronics stuff. Um, I'm an Arduino enthusiast and programmer, and I am here with our video producer, Josh Gilbert. Josh, how you yep. doing? Pretty good. And glad to be back here. Great. And Josh is not, uh, Josh is new to programming and electronics, very much so. Um, and that's kind of the dy dynamic we set up here. You know what I mean? So we can just kind of talk because I know a lot of people in the audience, a lot of people joining us are like, some people are just brand new to programming and electronics. And I feel like that sets up a good, uh, dynamic, you yeah. know what I mean? We're uh, you can keep us, you know, kind of grounded in that type of thing. So that's yeah, I think cool. there's so many topics, like even last week with John realizing like just a few minutes of talking, kind of get really into the weeds because it's something you're so well versed in. But for people like me, you know, we're, we're talking about words that, you know, so many words I don't even know. And so having a little bit of a, 
of a, a wall to bounce ideas off of is nice to, to get some. Yeah, good. absolutely. No, I, I think that's super handy. Uh, last week, I feel like it was really useful having you kind of like ask some of those questions to John that, you know, just kind of put like, hey, wait a second. Right. <laughs> Are we talking you know? about that? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I know like uh, I there's this one podcast I listen to. Actually, if you only listen to one, if you only watch one uh, podcast about programming electronics, you should listen to the embedded podcast. It's, it's such a good podcast. Really? Uh, yeah. Um, but they, they are, uh, they're kind of like, they're both consultants and they do professional consulting for embedded design and stuff like that. They've been going, their podcast has been going forever. I've been listening to their show for like maybe a decade, I think. But I remember when I first started listening, I would not, they would say so many words that I would not understand. Yeah. Was just, and sometimes, you know, I think they're pretty, they're pretty good too. They'll kind of like mention like, oh, hey, this is that, this is that. But a lot of times they don't. Yep. And it was slowly over the course of years, I like started building up that uh, lexicon of right. words. Like there's just so many, man. Well, right. It, I mean, it's a whole language. So I, I, I've been enjoying like i'm learning that as i do a lot of the video work the editing i i definitely am, am learning some of that jargon but there's just constant and there's and there's new terms being made all the time yeah yeah new terms and then it's like you forget half the terms you know that type of thing but sweet awesome man we got a bunch of people tuning in um let's see we've got uh george from colorado springs welcome george just some dude from monterey california welcome uh let's see we've got uh Andre from Switzerland. Awesome. Great. To, great to have you here. We have a uh, Arduino with with a little microcontroller. Right All right. <laughs> nice. Great. Morocco. Awesome. Morocco, maybe or yeah. hi from Morocco. I'm guessing Morocco, but um, All right. Greg asked a good question. Why do they call it embedded? Um, and I'm I'm assuming you're referring to that uh, podcast I was referring to. Um, so like uh the term embedded is uh, like a term generally referred to when you are programming stuff like microcontrollers or something that's going to be inside of some type of like enclosure. And mm -hmm. it's a really loose term, this term embedded, but like uh, for that. So for that show, for example, embedded, I think it's embedded.fm if you wanted to check out their website. Anyway, uh, that term embedded, like a uh, software developer would say, like they would self-identify as an embedded programmer. Like, yeah, I'm an, you know, I, I am an embedded programmer. They're writing code that ends up being on some type of uh, target, like specific target uh, microcontroller development uh, kind of project or something. Yeah. Like um, but it gets like really, it's not like hard and fast. So like some people might say that like a phone like if you're writing software for a phone, some, you know, some parts of the phone might be like embedded development. Some might not be. I don't know. That's kind of like my general take on the term. I can't say that I'm a, uh, my take is the last or the most proper way to say it. But, mm -hmm. you know, that's kind of what uh, I, but that's a great question because I always wonder for the longest time, like, wait, what is it? What does it mean to be embedded? Right. Like, and what's funny is I think a lot of people doing our, like a lot of people working with Arduino and stuff are straight up. They're 100% doing embedded development, but yeah. they don't, that term doesn't really mean anything to them, but they're, they're, you know, they're embedded developers for all intents and purposes, you know, yeah. if, you know, but anyway, um, so. Yeah, we, uh, we got, we got a couple questions here too. Um, I'm, I'm curious, and maybe this is unanswerable right now, but is there a good link or reference for good programming techniques? For example, glo global versus local. We've talked about that a little bit uh, in videos that I've seen, right? Yeah, no, this is a, this is a great question. Um, well, I would say, okay, well, I feel like programming techniques is kind of like a broader, you know, like the, the place I always talk about, like my favorite place on the internet for Arduino is uh, arduino.cc forward slash reference reference it's, yeah. it's just the arduino reference and uh you know what we could probably pull up that yeah. page real quick you want to share my screen i gotta there we go you want to if you can share my screen josh thank you very much so uh let me just arduino and see like check this out i just type ar 
and it like it's like the first one that comes up. It's like but, Mike, we know that you love this page. Yeah. yeah, but this is like the Arduino reference page, and I know I hit that. I I probably talk about this every week. If there was a bingo, it'd be like Arduino <laughs> reference. Yep, he hit it four times. Bingo. Uh, but um, this page is just so helpful. But this isn't. This is about um like the specific functions in the language. This is about yeah. like different variable variable data types, like control structures and that type of stuff. And so like, let's say I had a question about say digital read, I could click on digital read and then it can tell me about like all the digital read stuff. It yep. does gives me some example code and stuff like that. But I feel like this is more, uh, this is more like syntactic um, as opposed to uh that's more syntactic as opposed to like good methods. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And I feel like that's what was it, Stephen? I think it was Stephen who mentioned that. Yeah, uh, was asking for like good links for that, and I can't think of like a specific place. Um, but uh, you know, this does kind of dovetail slightly into something that somebody had asked about uh, during the week to talk about on the show, which was this book called Clean Code. Um, See, so can you read that? A a handbook of agile, agile software craftsmanship. Yeah. Uh, so this book's, it's actually part of a series. It's written by uh, Robert C. Martin. Um, oh yeah. You got it up on Amazon there. Uh, it's not a bad book um, at all. I've heard, yeah, I've heard you mention it a couple of times, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think I have mentioned it a couple of times. Um, it's not like light reading by any stretch. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's got a lot of like, it's, it's got a lot of ways in there to help you think about how to formulate your code. Yeah. Um, it is, it is written. Uh, the examples used are written in Java. Um, and I think it's probably got a little Java centrism to it, you know, but I don't think you need, um, you don't necessarily need Java background in order to like, kind of, you know, gain a lot from it. Like, look, it's got a picture. There we go. See data. <laughs> there we go. That, that is all. That is no, I never got. Is it data or data? I don't know. I, I know he's got a preference on that, but wait, is that is that a Star Trek? Am I? Yeah, that's that's a Star young? Trek character right there. Uh, that's uh the cyborg, right? Yeah, uh, I can't remember if it's data or data. He has a preference how his name is said. Anyway, but uh, that's fun. Um. But uh, yeah, so, but this book talks about like, I don't know, things about um, thinking about how you structure your functions, talks about like naming paradigms. But one of the things that got me with this book uh, that I, that really stuck to me, and I'm, I, I actually want to read this. I'll, I'll just read this little. Oh, awesome. Okay. Yeah. I made a little bookmark here. Should I, should I get some background music prep for you? Just no. to set the mood. No. Yeah. Let me uh, get some <laughs> water. Through. No, no. All right. <laughs> Okay, so he's got this section about comments, okay? Mm -hmm. And before I read this book, I was uh, like, uh, I, I always had in my head that comments were like, um, comments were like super, super important. And I, I tended to be a verbose comment writer. Um, you know, like I would write a lot of comments and I always thought like, yeah, hey, this is the way to do it, you know? And... Um, but let me just read what he says, all right? And just so you're clear, comments in code, uh, you're, maybe that's where you're going. I, so when, when you're talking about, all right, go ahead. What were you gonna I, say? Well, I was going to I was going to try to do some reflective listening, like I, what I think comments are, and you can tell me if I'm right or wrong. What what comments are in code? Does that work? Yeah, yeah, go for okay, it. Okay, so for my little understanding, comments are uh, something that is like peripheral to the code that is just for the engineer or the person programming to communicate with themself or with somebody else. So it's just like there's the actual code that's doing something. And then it's just like a little note. It's like a little like sticky, uh, sticky note to say, this is what this code is doing. It's almost like a label, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's like, that's pretty much exactly ah, right. I got man. it. Nice okay. job. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's great. Awesome. Um, yeah. It's supposed to be instructive, right? Yeah. Um, cool. So here's, let me just read the opening, uh, the opening paragraph here. Okay. Nothing can be quite so helpful as a well-placed comment. Nothing can clutter up a module more than frivolous dogmatic comments. And just like a module would be like a sketch or a program, right? Okay. 
Nothing can be quite so damaging as an old crufty comment that propagates lies and misinformation. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And so like what he got me to realize in this book, or at least on that comment section, is that your comments are just as important. In some instances, your comments are just as important as your code. You know what I mean? Like the, the thought is if you're going to take the time to write a comment, take the time to think about it like you would think about your code. And, wow. and if you, yeah, right. I know like that to me, I was like, man, that sounds hard. Like, wait, this programming thing's hard. What gives? Like, right. Well, it almost seems like <clears throat> because it's not actually the code, it's just like notes that it could be just like little things you jot down and it's like not that important, but he's kind of saying that like, it's really important. It's, it's, it's way more important than that, that it's like actually guiding, guiding the user. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, right. Yeah. And I guess he's saying like, if you're going to, let's say you go through and something changes in your code uh, and like, you know, a, a point he makes in here, I think he makes it in here is that code, code gets read far more than it gets written. So you're going to write a piece of code. Parts of it are going to change over time, right? Like, let's say you write a piece of code and you're like maintaining it over time. Code's not necessarily like some static thing. You know what I mean? It's like mm -hmm. you write it, but then things change, the world changes and it's kind of like, you know, getting yep. updated and stuff, right? But if you don't update your comments, like maybe some, maybe some, maybe you've got a piece of code, like some IOT project, right? Some internet of things project. And maybe it grabs like weather data from, I don't know, some weather website, right? And it reaches out to a, it reaches out to some URL on the internet and maybe like um, the call, maybe the function that makes that call, I don't know, maybe it like changes or something like that. Who knows? Or I, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? And maybe yeah. in the comment you're saying like, Hey, this is the, you know, this is where you need to go or maybe like blah, 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 something like that. But then the code changes, you change the code, but you never update the comment. Now no. it's like, okay, the next person who reads it is kind of like, wait a second here. There's a disconnect between what this comment's saying and what the code's saying. It's like, yeah. what gives, you know? Yeah, Skiva's saying, how about writing most of the notes before programming to or organize it instead of after? Yeah, I like that too. Um, I, uh, I think that's a great idea. Um, it, I mean, it seems like it's also something that you, in the midst of, like as you're working through stuff and as you're like building out the sketch, you kind of realize like, oh, I should probably notate this. So it's it's going to be kind of dynamic when you use it. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I think you're right. Um, so like uh, one thing like, I guess when I'm writing comments, what I try to do, and I picked up this from, uh, oh, this is another, this is another really good. If you're, you know, if you want to like, uh, steep yourself in like this whole programming electronics world, this whole embedded development, you should get on this guy's news newsletter. Uh, just give me a second. I'm going to remember it. Uh, shoot. I can't remember his name. He's like the coolest programmer out there. Um, shoot. Is this that YouTube guy that you No, No, Hey Josh, let me, let me look it up real quick. Do you want to talk about the rock? You want to show off the yes. rock band thing? Let me look it up and then I'll get back. Cause I really want to, this is like one of my favorite newsletters. I've also been looking <laughs> through it for years and this guy, he's like a consultant for tons of companies. And so he's just got yeah. lots of really good advice. Yeah. Um, so let me look up his, uh, cause it's like on the tip of my tongue, but okay. Well, I was going to show, we had talked about this beforehand. I was going to show the audience. Um, I heard about a band called Captured by Robots, which is a, a, voc a, a one man band where he has programmed using Arduino to have all different robots on stage playing the songs actually with him live. So he's up there singing and it's kind of this like uh, he's got like it's kind of this mythic like m medieval aesthetic thing. But I'm just going to play a little clip of it here. Um, so it's him singing and then all the other band members are just robots that he's programmed with Arduino boards to play the actual, um, instruments. So that's pretty interesting. I can't play the music, but just to show the visual, um, it's <laughs> yeah, right there. We got, I think, I don't know what that is, like some sort of guitar, but it's literally a robot with eyes playing the parts and it's like a live band. Um, Dude, that is totally cool, man. Just, I, I mean, I just can't believe it. I play in a band and look, we've got a drummer who's using 
using real sticks on the kit and playing the hi-hat. It's like, I can't imagine what it'd be like to see this. But it looks like they're having fun. And I, I can't, I mean, one time I used the Arduino to program like the, our theme song with Kid on a Shield and the amount of time it took just to get, I mean, that was using like a piezo buzzer to get like the different keys and notes, but I just can't imagine how much time this would take to like program like, okay, everyone sync up together. Now strum the guitar at the same, like that, this just seems like so much work. And then he, you know, colors it all with him just like having fun pretending like it's no big deal wearing this cape and kind of screaming, <laughs> screaming around on stage. Pretty incredible. No, that is totally incredible. I wonder what it takes to set that up. You know, know. what I'm saying? Like that has got to be some, but you're saying it's like a one man band. It's like a one man show. Yeah. So he just, he does it all. Yeah. Oh, that is so cool. That, that this reminds me of that, that uh, cartoon robots, I think it was called. It just like, looks like kind of sci-fi, like this feels futuristic. Just nice. You know? um yeah are they still touring is like they still do it i think they do they do a couple tour like they do a tour a year so you can you can you can check them out they were in minneapolis recently i think it's kind of heavier more uh like uh, you know metal music for anyone out there like right, that but. right oh i'm sure most of our listeners are death metal death <laughs> programming in death metal oh yeah music oh, well, well, i mean that's like my programming music like you know <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Steve, I wouldn't describe it as medieval. Um, yeah, it's, I don't know. <laughs> uh, that's so funny. Did you, were no, you able that, to find this? I was, yeah. Jack Gansel is the gentleman's name I'm referring to. Uh, oh, well, I don't, I don't have it oh, up. But anyway, yeah, Jack Gansel is the guy's name. Uh, and the Embedded Muse is the name of his, uh, his, um, newsletter that you can get on if you just google jack gansel and or uh anyway it's so uh it's a great resource in fact um anyway but he's been right he writes on all the different types of stuff and like i said he's a consultant uh, an embedded consultant for different companies and there's that term embedded coming up again yeah but um one thing he we were talking about comments before and one thing he mentioned to me was that um, when he's writing a piece of code and hopefully I'm not misquoting, I'm like, this is me remembering from years ago. What he'll tend to do is like, right before, let's say he's writing a function or he's writing a piece of code. First, he'll write the comment out that what he's about to write, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, you know, this does that or something like, you know what I mean? Like some instructive thing, right? Like yep. a function two or something, something along that line. Right. Um, or, uh, this tracks the index of a buffer or whatever. Right. He writes the comment first, and then he writes the code that implements the idea there. And I feel like this kind of goes back to uh, what that question is that kind of brought this up. Was yep. it was it Skeev asked, or maybe Steve brought yeah, it up? Yeah, Skeev here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Skeev brought that up. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, I mean, it kind of comes back to like trying to think through your code um, yeah. as much as you can. Is is uh, that what pseudo code is? Is that what Skeev's referring to? Is because it's not code, but it's in the sketch. Um, well, pseudo code is a uh, pseudo code is fake code is what that literally means, um, as people probably know. But uh, pseudo code is when um, what you do. So pseudo code is more of like a paper kind of paper pencil kind of exercise, okay. uh, or it can be right. And what you do, or a whiteboard, or you know, whatever. Or I guess if you had a stone and a chisel, you could do that. Yeah. Too. But anyway, the uh, <laughs> cool, yeah, it's where you you don't. Um, it's where you you're not actually writing code, like syntactically correct code, mm -hmm. like digital read, open parentheses. You know, like, but you're saying something like uh, digital read. Uh, you're writing something just like the words digital read uh, the sensor pin. And then, uh, and then you might be like um, sample sensor or you might be like, uh, yeah. Okay. Or, you know what I mean? So you're, it's, you're just using like English language, you know what I mean? Or whatever language it is to kind of describe the steps. You can kind of make it more or less look code ish, but not really code. You know what I mean? But basically it's the idea. It's like, like, uh, what's his name or the comment you just had up. They said, it's just yeah, kind of like the logic. It's just the yeah. logic. Yeah. Yeah. So you're just kind of like writing that logic there, yeah. um, on a piece of paper. And the idea is that it, it helps you start thinking about 
like how are you actually going to do it and you know how are you actually going to write the code like i know uh skeep said he's not into the pseudocode so much um i you know it's like i hit it sometimes like sometimes i'll really hit it hard especially if i'm working on some specific tiny like piece of an algorithm i'll do it like um like if there's some i don't know i'm trying to think of like a good example if it's like a small little small algorithm or something i'll write it like i yeah i mean i do it all the time though like i got this this is like my program you know one of my books for programming and i will oh, i'll see if i can find an example where i just i will pseudocode stuff out all the time before i yeah. actually start typing anything kind of well, <clears throat> an example here but Having um, edited some of your work, Mike, it seems like a pretty helpful step to like get the ideas out so that in real time, because uh, I guess what I'm hearing is it's almost like the grammar can get in the way, like the, I'll call the grammar is like the technical side of when, you know, you miss, you miss, uh, I'll embarrass my lack of knowledge, but like you miss the curly braces on the end of something or something where you, it's just like a technical issue, but the logic is there. This is a way to just think about it from like a, a higher level and then after you have that written out you can go in and make sure it's all like tight so that it can actually like the the software can actually read what you're doing but you don't want to get like hung up in the weeds of the like the little technical stuff josh that's exactly it man it's okay. all about like not getting hung up in the weeds um and like you said kind of thinking at that at that logic level what's yeah. also can be nice about it if you're working with somebody like let's say you're working on a program and you're not like you're maybe there's multiple stakeholders, right? Uh, you could potentially bring somebody in who isn't a domain expert in software development, yeah. but like maybe they're the domain expert in like whatever it is you're helping them program. Yeah. And it's a way for you to communicate in English, but still, you know what I mean? Like this yeah. just, yeah, you know, that's maybe a little more, I don't know how often that happens, but anyway, so yeah. here's uh let me, let me give you an example. I don't know if this would be any good, but so I was writing my son, I was making this, I was trying to make this little game for my son on an Arduino. Right. And so like, I was just like, you know, Hey, this is kind of what I'm thinking the layout. You can see it's just sloppy as all get out. Right. It's not like this is I'm sloppy right handwriter anyway, but you can see, like, I'm just trying to think like, okay, how, how is this thing going to come together? And it's not necessarily that the pseudo code becomes the code. It's the exercise of like thinking through what the heck you're doing. Yeah. You know, that's like all the difference uh, on this line. I'll, I'll embarrass myself. If you want to share my screen, I'll, I'll show you, uh, I'll show you something I'm working on. So another way of, uh, and I don't want, I don't claim to be a pro at any of like this kind of thing, right? There's like a whole industry built up around how to like properly, put code together with it, especially with a team. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. Um, maybe a lot of people that who are watching this are just kind of like, you know, doing their solo kind of right now. Maybe they're just solo or whatever. Yeah. 90% um, of the stuff I'm doing, I'm doing solo, right? You know, like um, obviously I'm I, like, I share my code with a lot of people and I have like technical editors that looks at stuff. But, um, you know, like when I'm just developing some whatever, like my son's project, it's just, you know, me doing it, right? Yep. But I still try to find a uh i still try to have a process that i walk through because it, it i do it for me you know what i'm saying like it helps me do that you know yeah so one way of doing that is um is like having these i guess they're called user stories all right and i'm sure there's somebody out there who's like an agile pro because this is kind of an agile-esque thing and agile is like a framework for developing software right so somebody out there is an agile pro and they just want to like take a dagger and throw it through the screen and like stab me right in the chest. Right. So, uh, but that's all right. I'm just going to show you what <laughs> I like. This kind of helps me when I'm, when I do stuff. Right. Yep. Um, so over here, and I don't know if you can see this or not, Josh. All right. So basically I've got yeah. like, I got three, I have three columns right here. I've got to do in progress and done. All right. Yep. And this is just like, what Kanban is that what these are called? I think this is referred to as Kanban. Uh, uh anyway, the, yeah, just, but okay, so like you know, these are columns, but like this whole process, so yeah, I'm, I'm just joking, yep, dude, you're such a like, I'm like, <laughs> Josh, you, <laughs> the online talk. stream jabs, yeah, it's hard to, hard oh to no, I loved it, that was great. All right, <laughs> anyway, so uh, so basically, um, what I do is I will. 
I will write a user story for kind of like each feature that I want to have mm -hmm. in the end uh, program. So right now I've been working on developing a, uh, a, I call it chat, chat GP Twino. I don't oh, yeah. know, chat GP Twino. But what I want to do is uh, I'm working on, I've got to like, it's coming along. Well, actually, look, I've only got one thing in progress, so it's not coming along that great. But uh, yeah. anyway. What, um, hey, Mike, sorry. What is this website you're showing? Uh, Steve is wondering. Oh, oh this is uh, on GitHub. This um, is GitHub. So this is GitHub, and this is a project on GitHub. Um, cool. Yeah, so you can uh, – so this is linked to a repository on GitHub. And if these, these words might not mean anything, but – okay, so GitHub is a website where you can, like, put your code in GitHub – is a system for version control of your code. So like, instead of like on your computer, you've got version one, version two, version three, version final, version final A, version final B, B, yeah, B, you know, know what I mean? Like I instead that. of that, what you do is you have what's called a system that like does a version control. And so you've got like your most current version, but you can always go back and look through the previous versions. Uh, Anyway, that's the basics of what GitHub is. So it's a, a version control uh, platform that uses Git uh, as its method for doing the version control. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's become a lot of really like, if you don't have a GitHub account, I'd recommend starting one if you're into this development thing uh, and um, tr you know, t doing some like just basic stuff and trying to figure out how to like set up a repo. Anyway, long story short, they have this page where you can set up a project and uh, but you can find this Kanban thing anywhere. There's lots of different Kanban websites out there. Uh, I'm trying to think of another popular one is. Um, uh, I can't think of it, Josh. You know what I'm talking about, man? We use it for work. Are you thinking about like Trello? Yeah, that's what that's it. man. Uh, okay. Trello, you know, you can do the same thing on Trello. Yep. But um, yeah, anyway, just, I mean. Yeah, especially in an all online world. I mean, doing as a freelancer, there's just so many tasks and things like having an organized, having tools that organize is just is pretty important. Yeah, right. Anyway, so uh, so what I'll do then is I'll like I'll write a user story for a specific feature. All right. So just so let me give a little background on what I want to do here. So what I'm going to have is a uh, I'm going to have like a physical keyboard, you know, like uh, won't be Bluetooth, but it'll be like a keyboard. Yep. It's going to be connected to an ESP32. And then the ESP32 is going to have a screen. So kind of like that. All right. A little tiny screen. There's my ESP32. Yeah, There's sure. an OLED. Yeah, there Close we go. Up. Thank yeah. you. All right. And uh, then what I'll do is um, I'll type on the keyboard. What I type shows up on the screen. And then when I hit enter, it goes out to op the OpenAI website to ChatGPT and it gets the response to the question. Yeah. Uh, and then it shows the response on the screen. So it's like basically a way of like kind of integrating ChatGPT into any Arduino project. It's kind of like what I want to demonstrate. Yeah, you know? that sounds awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I think it should be fun. I mean, like the idea is like you could have something standalone because the ESP32 is a wireless microcontroller. Mm -hmm. um, and so the idea is like, it can be, you know, you don't have to drag in your, you know, you don't have to have your cell phone or your computer or something like that. You can just have a, you know, like a, just a tiny little microcontroller and it can make a call to some really, you know, interesting. I've been talking to, anyway. So yeah, that's, no, that's the idea. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. So, so then what I did is I just went in here and then I wrote like, okay, well, what do, what do I want like the experience to be like? So, um, so I say, okay, when user powers up jet, chat GP Twino, a cursor blinks on the screen with uh, type question shown, right? So this is, so this would represent like, okay, well, cause when you're starting out to program something, you gotta start somewhere, you know what I'm saying? Like, where do you start when you're gonna program? And um, and then it's like, well, okay, I guess you, yeah. So what, you, what you're trying to do is you're trying to get to some, some thing that's, that you can actually show off as soon as possible, right? Yeah. Like I wanna have something where I could say, I could show you, Josh, I could be like, hey, Josh, I'm working on this thing here. Look at it. Yeah. And even if all it is is a blinking cursor, like that's some that's some thing. Yep. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And so like the code that I'm going to write then, like when this is in progress, the code I'm writing is just trying to achieve this single feature. Right. Yep. And then when I've got that feature done, I move it over to done. And then I decide like, OK, well, what's the next feature 
I'm going to work on, right? And then I would drag that over. So then I've got this one and it says, okay, when user types message on keyboard, it is displayed above the keyboard so that the user can see it. Yeah. Okay. And then like I would implement that in my code. You know what I'm saying? And then it's like, I can always add stuff over on the to-do list, but like, this is kind of how I'm, you know, it's kind of yeah. how I like, and I'm not saying it's perfect, but what, what it really does for me, again, I feel like all of this, the comments and the planning, the pseudo code, like it's just a process for getting my brain moving, you know? Oh yeah. But I mean, I think our brains just respond really well to these sorts of tools. Um, and so, I mean, having not really worked on any sketches myself, I can't imagine I mean, let's go back to the robotics thing. <clears throat> How much it would take to 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 e make each robot and then have them program the specific fingers to look like they're playing guitar and then to sync those up to the other. Like the amount of like it's such a robust thing that it's such a huge endeavor. You can't just like I mean, you could you could try to just like, OK, well, what's next? Like having an outline. Um, I liked what. Somebody said here that it's basically just like a storyboard, like pseudocode is like a s storyboard, um, which I think is super helpful. Like our brains just want those like, this is what's going on. Now let's fill in the details instead of just pretending that we can just start and then somehow, you know, manage to get all the way there without really planning it out. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I feel like it's fair to say that you, you're not going to know everything at the start. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. even when I was, you know, I have been doing some development on this like already i'm like oh yeah i didn't realize that you know like i think it's like one line in and the plan breaks but you know but that's like that's just part of it like it doesn't uh yeah. um you know yeah. yeah i don't know you just you it's just kind of the process you know going through it and stuff right um arthur asked a question and i didn't want to miss this um it looks like arthur's new to the academy and is asking where you'd recommend to start class wise um, I would say if you want to jump into the Arduino programming, go for the Arduino course for absolute beginners, second edition. That would be like my definite, hey, start here. Um, there is another short course called the prototyping course, which is only like a couple videos long, but it's really instructive about thinking about planning and prototyping a project. Mm -hmm. um, so you could start there. I mean, that's kind of like a that's more of like, I'm just going to sit back and watch this kind of thing. It doesn't really get you programming or anything, but it kind of gets you in a mindset of like, okay, like how do we think about putting together a project from like a like yeah. stepping back and thinking about it? So that would be another one. And then finally, my last recommendation, if you're completely new to like programming and electronics, we've got like a basic electronics course that you might want to do the basic electronics just so you're like kind of savvy on some basic Ohm's law stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, but honestly, I really lean towards just diving into that Arduino course for absolute beginners, second edition. It should be like the first one that pops up there when you log in. But awesome. Um, yeah. Did you want to jump into a customer project or what was? No, on? that'd be that'd be great. Um, yeah, I feel like I don't want to miss. Uh, um, so, uh, you know, yeah. Steve mentioned something. I feel like, man, we just have these fantastic comments coming in here. Uh, Steve do, mentioned yeah. GitHub is a bit more complicated than I'm comfortable with. Do you know any GitHub, good GitHub tutorials? Um, man, Steve, I am right there with you. GitHub is, uh, well, Git and GitHub can be like, there's a bit of a learning curve, um, especially since most people interact with GitHub using command line tools. Okay, so uh, um, in a command line tool, some people just aren't used to using it or it's just another layer of stuff to kind of like figure out. Um, and uh, it took me a while to like wrap my head around it. Yeah. Uh, but once I did, I was far more comfortable with it. But honestly, I have been through GitHub has some examples on their website. They, they I think they call it the GitHub flow. That might be semi, that might be useful. I'm gonna have to think on that one. I'm not, I'm not hundred percent sure if I can point you to one exactly, but I yeah. will say that I will say this. I know like Git, like, so Git is its own like language. I think, I think you'd call it a language, its mm -hmm. own command structure. Git's like this, right? I know about that much Git and I feel like I can do what I need to do. There's like, you know, four or five Git commands that you have to know. And then um, it can get 
it can get complicated really fast. Uh, Git is G I T, by the way. I know if we're keep throwing Git. that around, but yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, it can get really complicated really fast and confusing. And I, I will like if I'm if I screw something up, I'll be on Stack Exchange or the internet searching for like, now how the heck did I do that? But yeah. you know, but um, yeah. I, I I just wanted to mention Carlos asked, "What's the name of the course again?" Can someone write it down, please? Just to be clear, we're talking about the Programming Electronics Academy, which is a membership program that we offer and so that question that arthur mentioned was in reference to the academy which course to start when you're when you've joined so i put a link to that um in the in the comments and we'll have the link to that also in the youtube description um cool but yeah robert also mentioned if you're looking for something like on youtube arduino in 90 minutes is a video we offer that's oh yeah really good absolutely for- Yeah, if you go to our uh, YouTube page, uh, which is just youtube.com forward slash at programming electronics, like the at symbol, Mm -hmm. um, it's right there. Or if you just search Google or YouTube for Arduino in 90 minutes, that video will come up. And uh, yeah, that video has done really well. So we've got a lot of great feedback on that. I think it's a good good place to start. Um, Yeah, I know. Okay, so I I see some other uh, mentions here. James mentioned that uh, GitHub needs a a curse uh, in itself because it's very complex. Um, It's funny, like I would say that uh, I have talked to uh, some professional developers who really don't like Git or GitHub uh, because Git is not the only version control software or, you know, language out there. There's lots of different ones, lots of different options, you know. Um, And uh, actually, Steve... Josh, Steve can't stand it. Um, oh, really? Yeah, it's not. It's he said it's his like least favorite. But anyway, yeah. I, 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 I don't know. It's kind of like the only one I know, so I don't have anything to compare it to. So I'm like, eh, it's all right, you know. Uh, right. But um, yeah, Mike. Uh, I know. Okay, so Mike, Mike Jones is asking about. I don't even know how to navigate GitHub. Like, okay, let's. This is actually a really good <laughs> question. This is kind of diving down into the weeds, but let's do it anyway. Let's do it anyway. Let me do a share screen. All right, you here we are. Okay. So I'm on the Arduino website. All right. Let's say, let's say that I'm Googling something like um, let's say I here's something I was Googling the other day. Uh keyboard library. Uh keyboard library Arduino. Ooh, here we go. So I do this search. I end let's say I'm searching for some library, right? Some Arduino library. And um I land on GitHub, right? And yep. I'm like, oh, okay. Because I'm guessing if you've ever been on GitHub, then you've seen a page that looks like this. And I totally understand why Skeev or <laughs> Mike Jones would be like, what? What is this? Yeah. Right? Like, it, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so, um, and so first I would say uh, there's, there's so much to talk about here, man, because if you're using Arduino in the Arduino integrated development environment, the IDE, and you find an Arduino library on GitHub, chances are you can just import the library using the Arduino IDE. Okay. So um, in the past, the import tool for the Arduino IDE, in my personal opinion, wasn't all that great. Okay. Like I would, in the past, I would rather have gone to GitHub and downloaded the library myself, um, then use the Arduino Arduino library import tool. In okay, so that was like that was me say I don't know circa ten years ago or something like that. Yeah. Now I'm very much like um, I just use the import tool on the Arduino IDE. Like it's just really good. So to use the imp, like if you want, so if you find a library online for Arduino, yep. just go into the Arduino IDE and then import the library. I won't walk through that right now, but I will walk through this real quick. So, um, so uh, let's see here. Okay. So the question was where, like, how do you even download this? Right. So like when you land on a page like this, basically, You can think of this. So this would be called a repository. All right. So this is a repository, a repo for short. Yep. And think of a repository as literally just a folder on a computer. It's just a folder on a computer. The name of this folder is PS2 keyboard. That's the name of the folder. And all of these is 
all of these lines right here, all this stuff are just the documents and folders inside this folder. Mm -hmm. So like if I could just, you know, if you have like some cloud service, like, you know, we use Google Drive at uh, Program Electronics Academy for the business or whatever to like share files. Like mm -hmm. it's like, it's just kind of like that, you know, if you use Microsoft 360 or whatever, it's so basically uh, this guy named Paul yep. has shared a, uh, a folder, you know, Hi, it's up here. Yeah. Hey, Paul, how you doing? Paul Strophigan has actually done a ton for Arduino. This guy rocks. Maybe I'll meet him someday. I don't know. But <laughs> yes. this guy has written so many awesome Arduino libraries. Uh, anyway, um, he. Uh, OK, so he's he, he's got all these documents up here and you can die. Like, let's say I wanted to go into the examples folder. I could click that. And now it opens into the examples folder, right? So these are the example folders. Yeah. And if I wanted to like, look, he's got this simple test. I could click on that. And now it's showing me the file and simple test. If I want to actually see that dot Eno file, I can click that. And now it's going to show me the raw code, right? Of that mm -hmm. Eno file. If I want to get back to the top, it like these lay a little breadcrumbs, you know, so I can go back to the, the top where I was. I don't know if this is helping or not. Maybe it's too, uh, it, well, um, <laughs> So no, yeah. how do you download the repo? That was the question. So here's what you do. All right. So I'm on this page right here. I go to code and then there's code spaces, but then there's local. All right. And what you do is you just click download zip. All right. Download zip. So if you wanted to download this file, I'll just go ahead and download it right now. Um, and it's just going to, you know, download it. I can tell you wherever I want to download it. Now, if you're downloading an Arduino library, you want to add it to the libraries folder in your sketchbook folder. So here I'm going to, uh, you know, I would go to like, usually it's in your documents or my documents. Mm -hmm. They've got an Arduino folder. And then in the Arduino folder, there is a libraries folder. And, um, and then you would just save it in the libraries folder. But one thing you need to be careful with is, um, and man, there's, I mean, we're getting into some real weeds here. We're getting some re real reads here. Well, <laughs> hey, Steve so said, I always wondered how to download. So, I mean, yeah, all right, this stuff all right. is helpful. Like, we, sh we could even do a video about this, but I think... Uh, I know, we totally you know. could. Um, but so here's, there's there's just a lot of getches. I was, who was I emailing the other day? And they were like, it was one of our members. And he's, he said, you know, it's never just as easy as you think it's going to be. Yeah, you know, exactly. it's like, there's always these little gotchas. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so... Now here, let's see, I've downloaded this, right? So it shows in my libraries folder, but notice that the name of the folder itself has a, has a dat, mine says dash master. It could be that you don't know what that folder name is going to be, but you need to make sure that the folder name in here matches the same name as the dot CPP file uh, and the dot H file. So the dot CPP and the dot H file. So CPP stands for C plus plus. It's like just the type of file, right? Anyway, those names need to match the folder name. And when you download it yourself, you you're going to have to manually change that, right? Oh, wow. Um, when you import it with the Arduino IDE, you don't have to manually change that. And the reason this is, is because it's just how the Arduino IDE is going to be able to find and reference your code when you're using it in your sketch. Like okay. it's got to be able to know the name of the library and if the name of the library, like the folder, how it gets saved is, is not necessarily going to match that anyway. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that, but wow, dude, I was just yapping on. Sounds like you care about this stuff, Mike. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's awesome. There's a couple of questions. I'm not sure what they mean. Like, how would you, how would you do it in a command line? Okay. All right. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I like, okay. So let me, uh, Give me a second here. <laughs> we can pull up the command line. Uh, let's I, do it. Let's I was do it. while you're doing this, Mike. I was gonna say we we were gonna talk about this today. We're actually gonna be putting all of these live shows on our podcast, Programming Electronics Academy podcast or PEA Pod, P Pod. Um, so apologize to anyone watching or listening because we're doing a lot of screen sharing right now, and I'll try to do my best to like reference kind of what we're doing. But you can always, if you're listening to this, you can always uh, watch it later on YouTube live um or sorry just a youtube after the fact but if you're listening hopefully we're saying enough that gives you some context for what we're talking about yeah no absolutely thanks for making that pitch josh i was that was something i definitely wanted to mention no worries, uh 
Yeah. So hopefully maybe when people are mowing their yard or going for a run or whatever, they can, you know, chat in. All right. So now I've got open up a, uh, so on like on Mac, I'm on Mac. It's called, it's called like terminal on Mac. Uh, it's like a shell or a bash on, on PC. Um, and, uh, well, let me, let me make it a little bit smaller, but okay. So this, we were talking before about like, man, get GitHub. It's all like, super intimidating part of that is because you have to eat the best way to interact with it is with the command line right and so like a terminal is just like a uh it's like an interface on your computer um and it's a way of interacting with your computer like so you've probably heard of a gui or gui right mm. graphical user interface well um a terminal is a cli a command line interface and all it is is a way to communicate to your you know to your computer right yeah and hopefully i'm not i'm probably like just this is probably horrible i'm not i'm not like i'm not a pro at command line interface so <laughs> take this with a grain of salt but basically no, it's like like you know like you open up word right you know or a word program or some word processor yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you've got your mouse and you go up and you click bold or you like maybe you've got something or you're doing some like graphic design work. You drag something over with your mouse. Like that's the graphical user interface. Like yeah. you're moving stuff, you're clicking stuff with your mouse, you're seeing stuff. Like that's how you that's how we normally interact. Like most most of the time think people think graphical user interface. Yep. Well, the command line interface is really just as robust of an interface to work with a computer. Um, I'm sure plenty of people. Uh, on this chat have used like back in the day, I think, pro, you know, computers were pretty much, you had a command line interface like that. That was all you really had. Yeah. And so it's like the exact, it's the same. You're still like telling the computer, like, you know, Hey, do this, do that, make it bold or, you know, go to that or whatever you might be doing. However, you might be interacting with somebody. You just, you're doing it at, on a line, you know? So yep. anyway, there's different Git commands to go to GitHub um and pull down a repository what those are off the top of my head i don't know i should probably know that it's probably like you know uh i don't you know i don't know i can't think of it off the top of my head it's like maybe a curl or something like git i, I don't know what it's probably like git poll or something like that um in fact if we went to this all right so it might be like okay so they do have a github so all right so this would be like uh gh repo clone okay so there you go it'd be a repo clone mm -hmm. is what it would be um i will say that uh so the command line you can have you can have all these different tools and stuff on your command line all these different programs um one of the tools you can use github actually has a command line interface tool um and it makes Git a little bit easier to work with on the command line anyway that's yeah. what this github cli is referring to so all right, man, that was like way in the weeds, but uh, <laughs> no worries. I mean, that yeah, that's I, I haven't used Git, GitHub much. Um, I feel like I, I could use it helpful. It seems like a helpful thing if you can figure out the interface um, to use, like as you're starting and learning, it seems like a yeah. pretty useful tool. Yeah. Oh, it is. It is super useful. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, you had mentioned the uh, the student project. Do you want to yeah. talk about one? Yeah, let's uh, grab that. Um, I'm going to, I'm actually going to post this in the chat. Um, well, college class itself. That's great. Um, so here I got the, this is uh, at program electronics.com customer project gallery. I put this link in the description. We have like, a, I don't know. I mean, you've been doing this way before I joined Mike, you have tons of projects that people have um, uploaded and like made blog posts about or you've made blog posts about yeah 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 well people send in their projects and like you know kind of like what they're working on and that type of stuff and uh yeah this is like the best part of the job is like just seeing what people are making um and we just like to show off what people are making um in fact well here th okay this isn't a project but let me just show uh where, where, there we go you want to sh uh, let me share my screen i'm going to take over there we go so this is somebody's just going through the, one of the courses and mm -hmm. they're just, you know, learning, learning like programming control structures and variables and for loops and all that type of stuff. But uh, can you see, you see, I mean, like, I don't know, they, that was something that got shared on the forum, but just like, you know, yeah. I don't know. It's, 
there's a lot that's still a lot of fun man blinking there's, leds figuring out that control process is a blast and uh, yeah so i don't know well there's something there's something honestly like be- i want to say beautiful about living in a world where there's electronics everywhere you're, you're fully immersed i mean i have hundreds of things in my house that do stuff but then learning what it actually takes to do those yourself and i mean obviously it's super simple we're just flashing different leds in a, in a rhythm but like it, it's i don't know it's something like profound to say that you can do this like if you want to take the time and you care about it invest in projects like you can make leds turn on in any way you want them to or like you know make a custom you know you can make uh, i guess you could probably make like a light uh like you know there's like the smart lights like you can do that yourself oh, right you in the time Fair enough. Hey, it's you it. know what? That was uh, Eric Zimmerman. This was his project. Hopefully, ho- Eric. Hopefully, you don't mind. That's that, Jared. that's mine. And but, it was fun. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> hey, that's fine. I know, Eric. You did a great job, man. Like this was just the other day. You shared it on the forum, and I, I like it. I, like that's my favorite part of doing this work is just seeing people like making cool stuff and just yeah. enjoying it. You know. So anyway, he, I wanted to show that off, but. And he asked uh, if there are Duino groups in Minneapolis area. I'm sure there are, but I'm such a newbie that I haven't like looked into it much. I'm I'm very much just working with Mike and, and getting, getting into it slowly, but that's great. Yeah. So, Hey, why don't we, uh, so why don't we check out, uh, one of these projects? I wanted to do the one with Klaus cause, uh, I don't know if Klaus is still online or not, but he worked with the home brewing. I think if you scroll up, 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 uh, Oh wait, maybe I'm wrong. Let's see. It was like, Oh, there it is. Home brewing with Arduino. Yeah. Let's yeah. That. that one. Yep. And uh, this was, let's see, and I don't know, I don't think this one has a video, but um, what he had done, he's like into brewing, like brewing beer and stuff like that. And he wanted to monitor his tanks. Like I want to see like the temperature and, um, you know, have a control panel and stuff like that. And what he was able to do is we, one of the courses we have is on uh, doing like IOT with this cloud platform called ThingSpeak. Mm-hmm. And uh, what he was able to do was like connect it to, I think so. He was able to connect it to ThingSpeak. There should be a graph down there. Maybe I'm wrong. I can't remember. I see. Yeah, there it is. So he was able to watch his batches online. You know what okay, I mean? Like, wow. see, and I don't know. I don't know what that's recording. Actually, I'm not sure what what he was actually reading out, but um, it was pretty cool. Dang. Um, so we built a control panel and all that stuff. Uh, you know, and I don't know. It was pretty sweet. Um, so like if you're into something, you know what I mean? And you're, yeah, I don't know. I'm always thinking about how could I automate this or what could I do that? You know, it's nice to be able to do that. So. Oh, that's awesome. Anyway, yeah. Um, what's the thing about brewing beer is like, it's illegal to sell. So if you want to, if you want free beer, just make friends with someone that brews it at home or something. <laughs> that's fun. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, no, I, I loved that project. That was fun. Yeah, but, again, uh, I put this link in the description. If anyone wants to, I'll, I'll put it in the YouTube one as well. Or in the chat, rather. Okay, um, sweet. Yeah. Ch- and check a, out yeah. And if you're uh, if you're a member and working on a project, please send it in. Just tell us about it. Sh- throw some videos in there. Share the code. Like, uh, I know sharing code. Like, that's one thing about putting your code on GitHub, for example, is it can be uh, a little intimidating to share your code out in the world because you feel like, oh, this isn't that good, or or maybe you think, maybe you think, oh, this isn't this good, or people will think it's dumb or whatever, and like, yeah. Uh, like that really never goes away. I still think about that all the time. Uh, not that I consider myself like some super professional software developer or anything, but you just got to do it. You just take the leap and throw it out there and uh, right. like, you know, getting it to work, getting it close to a solution. Like you should be proud of that. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, oh yeah. So. Cool, man. Well, uh, I feel like, um, yeah, I don't know. We're coming up on an hour, man. This has been a lot of fun. Um, yeah. We, uh, Arthur mentioned what, what courses to join. And just to be clear, I was going to show quick. Um, this is the Program Electronics Academy. And I'll put this link in the description as well, like I keep saying. Um, but did you, have, you want to talk about it a little bit, Mike? Yeah. I mean, like, uh, like we mentioned before, we're not trying to do a hard sell by any stretch of imagination. But uh, so like Program Electronics Academy, we're an online education company. And what we do is we create training that helps people learn how to program Arduino so that they can really, we're trying to help people build confidence. So when they sit down to program something, they actually get, you kind of have a sense of what you're going to do and how you can get there. 
Uh, it takes a lot of work to do that. You know what I mean? But we're trying to develop a program and, you know, we've been doing it for years now uh, to help people make progress. And we've got a bunch of different courses in there, but we also have like a private forum where people can ask questions and like get help on lessons and just, you know, ask some general questions about um, like stuff they might be programming. And uh, that's kind of what, uh, that's kind of what we do. That's, um, that's kind of our gig. So anyway, if you want to check out that uh, academy program, you can go to uh, programmingelectronics.com and just there's a membership tab at the top. If you click the membership tab, it'll you know tell you about it. So awesome. Cool, man. Well, I guess we'll call that a wrap. Uh, everybody, thank you so much. This was so much fun having everybody here. We're going to be here next week, Friday, right? Next week, Friday. Yep. 1030 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, just love having people here and talking to everybody. Um, yeah, it's been a blast. Thanks everyone for commenting. I'm also just one last time to say at the top here it says programmingelectronics.com slash question. Robert said where can uh, they share their code? I knew about all of this and you can you can send questions or like send your code. You can do dot you know files in that actual form. Yeah. Yep. Um, so please uh, feel free to ask any questions and um, yeah, we'll be back next week. How long has P8 been going? Mike? Um Ah, oh, geez, a long time. I mean, like officially, officially, I think like 2013 ish, but uh, it it's kind of morphed into something over time. So yeah, yeah. And uh, next week's topic will be any question that you all send. So Stephen, if you have something <laughs> yeah. specific, you can uh, inform where the conversation goes. Yeah. Oh, you know what? There was oh man, there was something I wanted to talk about that. Oh, shoot, I didn't get to it. That the question um, in the chat. Yeah. No, Will had sent. Will had sent in a question last oh. week and i wanted to talk about it um he talked about like uh making a device i oh, man let, i'm just gonna bring it up really quick people yeah. probably gen anyway he talked about making a device like so what if you wanted to make something where you let's say you've got your keys on a keychain right and um maybe you've got like some type of fob on it and the idea would be that uh let's say you, you i don't know you're out golfing or something and you happen to you accidentally drop your keys and then you walk away or you're driving your golf cart away when you get outside of a certain perimeter, your phone starts going nuts at you being like, hey, you're outside of the range of your keys or something like that. And he was just kind of asking, like, generally, geez, how would you how might you go about that? Yeah. Uh, to answer this question, like, to be honest, I'm really not too sure. I know he mentioned using kind of like a uh, radio frequency device um, to do that. But mm -hmm. I'm not so sure that you can do the distance with the radio receiver necessarily. Um like how you could do that on a granular basis. I'm not sure how you'd pull that off. You know, you could do like the lithium battery thing, like doing the updates, getting your phone to update based on like, you could use like an ESP32 perhaps that's paired with your phone because mm -hmm. ESP32s are microcontrollers that can also connect to Bluetooth devices. You know, they can connect as a Bluetooth device. Um, and so you could, uh, you could have your ESP32 like paired with your phone, um, but again, the issue, like if you really want to, because he was talking about like you could change the 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 parameter with like maybe it's not maybe it's not 20 feet, maybe it's 10 feet or 100 feet. Yeah. Um, and I'm just not sure how you do that radio frequency wise or even Bluetooth wise. I feel like you'd have to get to you'd have to go to GPS at that point. Um, yeah. So anyway, anyway, I, I mentioned I wanted to bring that up because I wanted to bring it up two weeks ago and I forgot it. But anyway. All right. right. So. No, awesome. It's funny. I sitting on my desk is my tile. You may you may have heard of this pop like company yes, that's yeah. essentially doing that. Um, but the whole point is like, how can we do this ourselves? How this is something I have to pay for monthly, and I have to replace the batteries, and um, it would it'd be cool to do it on my own DIY, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and I mean that would that could be one way that you do it is like, okay, if you're outside of the range of the Bluetooth then your phone starts going off. Like your, ch your phone is checking for that Bluetooth connection. Mm -hmm. And then when it doesn't get it, it, uh, you know, maybe that's one way it could do, then it starts beeping. But the thing is now you don't have that adjustable perimeter. It's yeah. just, you're, it's based on the length and like that can vary from, you know, that could vary based on the conditions, you know, like, totally. so anyway, um, cool. Awesome. Cool. Everybody, thanks so much. Appreciate awesome. everybody tuning in. This is yeah. so great. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Yeah, have a we'll great see you weekend, next week. everybody. Yep.